nicest thing. He's, he's nothing better than driving a fire engine down Oxford Street the wrong side of the road in the rush hour. I tell you, any driver tells you any different. It's great. It's a, it's a good thing to do. second floor okay they're gonna wind you up to the second to the next floor okay there's a, a man and a couple of dogs we think yeah we'll find out when we get uh, get it open he's not all that bothered actually at the moment at the moment but the dogs are right mate no, there's a lot of people out here. Right, can you all get out of the way? Because he's a couple of dogs here. Keep up! 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 Okay, they're out. From me, stop for Neville House. One person shut in lift, released. Over. Uh, so what we're asking for then is two days and two nights, Michael. Yeah, two straight off. Yeah, two days. Two days. Yeah, the only problem we might have it's the last two weeks in August, doesn't it? <laughs> Who's that? So we might have a bit of a problem there. Winkle, there. could you come down to the office and sign your form ten? All right. That's if you're not too busy. <laughs> right. From the nickname is Winkle. The governor give me that, by the way. He's the sort of cruelest one for a big lantern. It, but it was either a choice between Thing or Winkle, and I said, well, I don't like Winkle. I prefer Thing. Just right in there, Lynn Farm's revision thing. Farm and Winkle. <laughs> so we know it is. Yeah. 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 Of course, they give you the one you don't like. A foolish thing to sort of confess that I didn't like that. Well, we only took to it today. Well, I've got that one, I've got one. Yeah. When you get blokes from different walks of life and everything, as we are at this station, and they all seem to knit together as a team. Um, because out on the fire ground, you're all relying on each other. There's always someone backing you all the way down, all the way down. and. Your lives are at risk out there, obviously, but you know, at the back of your mind, you think, ah, oh, the leading end's there, or um, the junior book's there. You've got to expect a certain amount of ribbing. You've got, on this watch, or most stations have got two machines, you've got 13 blokes living with each other for two days and two nights out of eight. So you're bound to get you know, different sorts of personalities, get rubbed up the wrong way. And a recruit from training school is seems a legitimate target for a, a lot of sticks. Some of it, most of it's friendly. You get the old bit of <laughs> nasty stuff, but not, not to any great extent. And after a couple of weeks, you get cheesed off of it and forget about it and you're sort of one of the team, you know. <laughs>
Try to learn these estates, but all you've got to have is somebody to give you a slightly wrong address, a name of a house, and this now is going to cover an area perhaps 200 yards by 100 yards of various walkways, tunnels, under roads. Now you've got to find a fire. <laughs> scary things that can happen to you is a flasher. The gases in the fire never quite get burning and they build up with plenty of heat and smoke. Then along comes a fireman, opens the door, lets the air in, then whoosh, an explosion. The air catches light. A lot of firemen have been killed that way. place all the time. The fire was in the basement garage. Nobody parks their cars in the basements now because these underground garages are very dark under the flats and uh, obviously ideal places for somebody to break into or vandalise.
going way out there. Oh, okay. Said, uh, looked as if somebody had been dosing in that uh, cupboard. And that cupboard to actually was an electrical intake cupboard. It was quite dangerous in itself because there was a lot of electrical equipment on the wall. It's crazy really, because they term a good job as a job that's well alight, one they can get into, interesting, plenty of plane. But they must all be scared. I know, you know most of them I talk to are scared. But it, it seems to go when you're inside. It's only the fear of the unknown as you're going through the door, really. After that, you just tear it up in what you're doing, I think. Yeah, it's, you just don't know. It's just it's the unknown. Oh, what again, you could go in here, they could have their pet cobra running around on the carpet for all you know, they could be welding equipment in there, which has happened. A couple of blokes got killed and one got seriously injured with that. Especially if you have been the first ones in, and you get to, <coughs> you've come out, your cylinder's finished, or your ear's nearly gone, it's starting to come out. You feel great satisfaction, or I do anyway, you feel a sense of achievement, I suppose, when you come out and you know you've, you've done your best. It's, um, you feel as if you've earned your money, I suppose. I would say that the, the night duty, you're going to attend probably five to eight shouts a night. Some nights, we, we can, we're not 13 up, 12, 13 shouts. Other nights it might go down to one or two. That's the, the lure of the job to me. You know, if we if we could count on the shouts, I mean, it wouldn't be half as exciting, would it? <laughs>